The Chicago Bears have reportedly inquired about free agent cornerback Arthur Muller. We're going to talk about that and what he could bring to the Chicago Bears if they do decide to go after him. And we're going to dive into the mailbag. All that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm Hayes. You guys can follow me right off the top at CEO Hayes. But more importantly, you can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform that we're on. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the content for today. And first up, Jeremy Fowler reported that the Chicago Bears and Jacksonville Jaguars are among teams that have inquired about the free agent quarterback, Arthur Mullet. Now, this guy has played a handful of years in the NFL already, uh, 30 years old. And, you know, when you look at a veteran cornerback presence, uh, the Bears may very well look to add that. He's more of a special teams contributor as well. But even with that said, in the 67 games he's played so far in his NFL career, he has 183 total tackles, 132 solo tackles, three sacks over that amount of time, and three interceptions. Not anything that jumps out the stat sheet at you at all. And I do find it a little bit interesting that cornerback is, is the position the Bears may be, you know, trying to do something with uh, heading into uh, the the uh, tr- in training camp. But, you know, the, the the Bears can benefit from adding veteran talent all over the field. When you look at the Bears still being a team that's still trying to crack that uh, pl- that playoff streak, get, it, get into the playoffs, do those type of things, adding veterans with as many young players as we have down there, it can't hurt. But, you know, you have to ask yourself, what does this mean? Who's c- potentially being waived? If they do uh, add him and he actually makes the 53-man roster, does this mean that Kendall Vador may be on his way out? Somebody that you guys know, I'm very much uh, with, let's get Kendall Vador the hell up out of here. But I will say this, Arthur Mullet, uh, like, he does not uh, does not offer the pass rush, uh, you know, uh, ability from that from the cornerback position. He doesn't. He's not really a, a threat to, to get a lot of turnovers and interceptions, at least not what he's shown so far in his NFL career. But, hey. The Bears, you know, still looking to do something. You know, you, you need veteran presence. We're pretty young in our secondary overall, outside of really Eddie Jackson. Even Jalen Johnson, who's a vet for us, is still a fairly young player. He has been in the NFL for a while, but, you know, you you you, you could look. I mean, Arthur Muller is, is a player that was undrafted, really worked himself up into what he ended up becoming in the NFL. And, you know, I, 5'10", 190 pounds. Uh, I, like I said, I don't really know. I, he played all 17 games for the Pittsburgh Steelers last season, starting six of those. He racked up 59 tackles, two sacks, and an interception in that time. So, you know, I mean, ultimately, the Bears adding talent you can never be mad at. At least I can't. It's just I don't know if if that's necessarily the move that I kind of expected from the Bears. But, hey, unexpected things have happened. Maybe they pay off. It's not like this guy's going to come in and be a, a, a starter or anything for the Bears. He'd absolutely be a depth piece maybe a little bit more solid and more consistent than what we have in some of our depth pieces there now. So, you know, the Bears could definitely look at that. Maybe help mentor Tyreek Stevenson, some things like that. Maybe, I, I, again, like I said, it's a, it's a move that I don't necessarily see a clear, like, path to where it just pays off hugely for the Bears. But ultimately, like, this is the time per- period where you experiment. You bring in guys, you see what they could bring in training camp. You have to make your decisions before you make roster cuts. And the Bears could look to sign him. He still may not make that 53-man roster, but let me know what you guys think on all that down below. But okay, it's Friday, it's mailbag day, which means that this episode is primarily built around your voicemails, and this first one we got up is from the 219. Hey, my brother Hayes, instead of Cognac Brothers, I appreciate it once again, um, allowing me to uh, give this info about the Bears. I am a very big Bears fan. I enjoy you guys' subject uh, or topic that you guys bring up, and um, I just want to say about um, about DJ Moore and, and before DJ Moore play pool. He's going to be, he, he, he's the key. He's one of the keys there. And a lot of people are on him, which is unfair. But if you really to pay attention, when he first came over, notice how he opened the door for Donnell Mooney to catch, get more catches and the white rhino to get more catches because of his presence. Pay attention to that. The boy is big and he's good. So now by DJ Moore coming over, He's going to open the door for all of them to get more catch because focus will be so much on him. They're going to forget about DJ Moore and Claypool and uh, the new rookie that's coming in. They're going, man, this year going to be off the chain. All I'm looking at for this game one, if Justin Fields will put up a six piece on him, it's a wrap. I'm talking about six. Oh, for the six. I, I was going with an eight ball, but you know what I'm saying. But that's, that's back in the days, but you know what I'm saying. But anyway. <laughs> Just put that 60-piece on him, 
And that's going to set the tone for the rest of the year. Much love to you, brothers. Keep up the good work. All right. So Chase Claypool, I, I have not heard Chase Claypool mentioned as a key. And even though, I, honestly, I do think that, yes, adding him, we saw impacted and changed because you have to guard him, right? But we didn't necessarily get to see him enough of him and Darnell Mooney to where I'm willing to say that, like, he really opened up the field anymore for Darnell Mooney, at least not personally. But when you look at the way that this wide receiver core overall comes together, right, DJ Moore kind of being that piece that helps everybody go more to their more natural roles is going to get them more opportunities because you, you, you absolutely are going to have to double DJ Moore at times. And I think overall the edge that DJ Moore brings as well to this team it helps. Like, and I and I and I have high hopes for this wide receiver core. The biggest question is, are they going to be able to stay healthy? Is Luke Getzey going to call more uh, passing plays? And is Justin Fields going to be more, um, you know, uh, 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 good and and just be uh, be more solid in that passing game as well? And I think that we're we're seeing those things go that direction. But I do want to see all three of these guys, like you said, add in the white rhino in the receiving game as well, add in the running backs the way we can use them in the game, Robert Tanyan as well. I think we're going to have a very interesting pass game overall. And you know, the, a lot of the narratives around Chase Claypool are just that. They're narratives. We've seen a lot of it around, unfortunately, Chicago Bears players. It just comes with playing in this city. But overall, I, I, I have trust and faith that the wide receiver core is going to be much improved over last season. And we're going to get those answers on what parts of this core do we keep together? Hey, can the Bears get a Marvin Harrison Jr. next season? But anyway, anyway with that, like, I, I do still have high hopes, and I do think with the offseason of having these guys, they're going to be fully healthy in training camp, gives Luke Getty, eliminates those uh, those uh, excuses for him not to have everybody integrated in that passing game, and we'll get to see what it looks like. All right, let's get into this next voicemail. This one's for Fred. Hey, so what's going on, man? How you doing, man? It's your boy Fred checking in out the uh, south side of Inglewood, man. I'm just looking forward to see what DJ Moore is going to bring to to the Bears and to help just feel the develop bar so the offense go and the line as well. And I'm looking to see, like, you know, how the linebackers are going to look. I like Jack Sanborn, and I think he's a dog as well. Like, even Noah Sewer, even if Noah don't start over Jack Sanborn, but I wouldn't mind seeing him play, you know what I'm saying, defensive end. He probably got to learn how to, you know what I'm saying, like come out of the three position or whatever, though, you know what I'm saying. But other than that, man, like, I'm just looking forward to see what the Bears going to do. And what's their record going to be? We're going to know them being in the playoffs and seeing Justin Fields get that development and, you know, get it rolling, though, because we got the team now. We got the receivers. And, you know, we got the defense man. I'm looking to see who's going to be the other defense man on the opposite side of Walker. You know, like, Gibson, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of like, you know, wishy washy with him. And, you know, Dominic Robinson, you know, yeah, he got a position switch a lot of times. And I think he might, I think he might. He might have a chance to, you know, start if not being that rotation, at least give us about probably seven, eight sacks coming off the bench as well, though. So I'm just looking forward to see what the Bears gonna do, see how Allen Williams that what he gonna do as well, since now he got defense built around him and he ain't got no excuse on why he can't, you know what I'm saying, get the job done as a coordinator put players in the right position. So it's you no know saying Luke Gessie as well too. So we'll see, man. I'm just looking forward to it, man, and I appreciate y'all doing the show. You buy me a C dub, the cognac boys, you know. So keep on, keep doing what you're doing, man. And you no, know, keep giving us that you know that good shit you get you give me to us, man. Chicago up, better down. All right. So just by the nature, because we've already talked about DJ Moore, yes. What DJ Moore brings to this Bears offense is in value. Like it's 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 the 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 value that it brings to this team is crazy, right? For a team that just needs everything that DJ Moore brings for a quarterback that needs every bit of the confidence and competent receiver that DJ Moore is, we need all of that. And so he's going to pay off hugely for the Chicago Bears. But I want to focus on the second part of your voicemail, the linebacking core, right? Noah Sewell, uh, Jack Sanborn. And like I said, I think both these guys are going to play a lot of snaps regardless of who starts, right? But I do think that this is an interesting uh, training camp battle. I do think that either guy has an opportunity to come out of it starting at that linebacking position. And I do think that either way, like I said, we're going we're gonna to benefit the most from it. I think that the linebacking core that we have here, and, and TJ Edwards, Tremaine Edmonds, Jack Sanborn, Noel Sewell, right? We have so much talent in that linebacking core that, it, you know, the sky's the limit for it, right? How they come together, how they, how they perform in both pass rush and coverage, all those type of things, how they help stop the running game. They're, it's going to be hugely important for a team that just needed a sustained level of play. We got dogs. 
in the linebacking core. And so with Jack Sanborn's ability to play just about every linebacking position, even if he does move to the bench, he's still going to get plenty of opportunity and plenty of snaps to play for the Chicago Bears and make an impact. And say for Noel, Noel Sewell, not as much versatility, I think, in where you're going to line him up at unless he can kind of learn that uh, to, to play on the end some. But ultimately, like Noel Sewell is going to be an impact player for the Bears as well. He's going to be given the opportunity to, and we'll see how he performs in the snaps, his opportunities, all of that. But having him and Jack Sanborn, two very young, talented linebackers in the Chicago Bears uh, organization, you can do a lot worse. Now, as far as who will be the other starting defensive end, um, I do. I did have a video, I think, late last week, I think it was, which uh, we're late into this week now. But I do think that, you know, I that Dominique Robinson is going to be given an opportunity. I still think the Bears think highly of Dominique Robinson. I do think that Travis Gibson is going to be given that time. I do think he's going to end up being that starter just because of what he did the last time we had a formidable defensive line and getting seven sacks. I do think he's going to get that. But Dominique Robinson is still going to be given every opportunity, I think, to thrive. And, and, and see what he can bring. I still think the Bears think highly of him. I still think the Bears are investing in his development. I do think that maybe his stock has dropped a little bit just based off how he performed as a starter last season. But I think coming into training camp, he's going to be given all those opportunities. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if like him and Travis Gibson end up playing kind of the same amount of snaps when it's all said and done just by the nature of Dominique Robinson being able to, to kind of back up either defensive end position. So that's kind of my thought process on it. Um, but I, I do think that to answer your question, that Travis Gibson is going to be the starter at that other on the other side of uh, of Walker when the season starts. That's my opinion. You guys can let me know what you guys think on all of that down below as well. All right, let's get into the next voicemail. This one's from the eight oh four. I think the Bears and the draft and the trading off season have done a remarkable job. It's almost like a superstar team being put together, but they still have to work on their edge. Um, I think Quinn might want to leave so that he come back. That'll be a big, hey, that'll be a big move. And I can hit the rumors is he thinking about maybe why he want to come back. That'll be another good move. You got the money, go ahead and get them both if they want to come. And I'm surprised, you know what? They need to go down there to L.A. and get Robinson back. That will really, really help. Allen Robinson carried that team for several years, and his experience is remarkable. They may not get much separation, but he's a hell of a receiver. Now, we get them two edges, we're good to go. And don't forget, let's get ready to bat out five next month. Bears putting together a superstar team? I'm not willing to say that yet. I hope. And 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 I, and I hope that you're right. I hope that when it's all said and done, we look at it and I'm saying, hey, man, yeah, you were right. We put together a superstar team. But more than superstar, because that becomes names and kind of how the national media looks at you. I don't care about it being superstars. I care, I care about the impact. I think we're going to be a hard-hitting team. I think we're going to be a team that plays aggressively. I think we're going to be a team that's disciplined as well. The Bears started off last season an extremely uh, uh, disciplined defensive team. Didn't get many uh, penalties called towards us. I want to see us get back to that. And with the talent that we have on that defensive side of the ball, I think it's going to be amazing. You guys know, I'm a defense guy. I'm a Monsters of the Midway guy. I think the Chicago Bears are at their best when they have a top 10 defense in the league. And I do think, maybe not this season, but I do think that with, with the core and, the, and what we're building, that we're going to have a top 10 offense and defense sooner rather than later. And I completely agree that we're building a team. We are putting a team together that is going to make us proud as Bears fans. That's my opinion. Not everybody shares that. Hey, that's what I think. As far as the the edge position, I think, and I've said this multiple times, I, I get it that as fans, we always think, hey, what name can we go and acquire? What this? What that? Can we go out and get this big player? I think ultimately the Bears aren't acquiring an edge. I just think with how quiet it's been, the fact that an edge like Yannick Ngakwe is out there, right, that, yeah, has its own issues, but as free agency goes on, you can probably get him cheaper and cheaper, and that the Bears haven't made a move. I don't think that they're that they're at and are, 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 are really pressed to make a move for an edge without really seeing what they have. I do think the Bears are going to go forward unless something drastically changes in preseason to where they see something that just concerns them. I definitely think that the Bears are going to be moving forward with the edges that we have. I think that's going to be it, and I think we're going to the uh, Ryan Poles, the Matt Eberflus, the coaching staff is really going to evaluate. That doesn't mean that they can't make a move midseason or something like that. But ultimately, I don't see them making a move for an edge before the start of the season. I would love to be wrong with that, especially if they make a, a move for impact edge, but I don't necessarily see it. Now, as far as getting A-Rob back, I'm not about living in the past. I like what we have as far as our, our receiving core, and I want to see what this core gets a chance to. 
I'm not somebody who constantly lives in the past. Like, had A-Rob stayed here, okay. But I, I think we moved on, and I think we're overall better for it as well. Now, if A-Rob ends up hitting a uh, free agency or something and wants to make a return, cool. He can definitely help us, but I, I want to see what we have in this. I'm not, at this point, really worried about the Bears acquiring a bunch of more players. I want to see his role with what we have and then make natural progression and choices based off that. I'm not about trying to go out and get the biggest name, this, this, and that. No. I, I like what we have. Let's evaluate, see what we have in these guys, and then make that decision moving forward. All right, let's get into this next voicemail. This one's from Nick. Hey, guys. Uh, Colin, today this is Nick out in, uh, you know, we'll say Northern Illinois. Um, I want to talk about Khalil Herbert and how he's not getting as much respect as I think he should get. I mean, I remember 2021, his rookie year, his first game that he ever started was against the Packers. And I want to say he rushed for 100 yards on like 15 carries, something like that. He had a great game, and it got completely overshadowed because that was the Rodgers, I own you game. So nobody talked about it. But then even last year, he's got 5.7 yards per carry. We all NFL running back yards per carry. And, you know, even the rest of the league doesn't seem to notice him. But even among Bear fans, there's talk about, you know, is it going to be him or Gaffey Foreman or Roshan starting? And, you know, Khalil Herbert has passed every test that he's been given. And there's all this talk of like, oh, well, you know, he doesn't receive the ball very well and he doesn't pass block. And, you know, for my money, what's worth, uh, you know, if you've ever listened to Khalil Herbert, he seems like a, a mature young kid who works pretty hard. And, you know, I, I bet anything that this offseason he's been working on catching and he's been working on blocking. So um, I just want to get your thoughts. I think that Herbert should be the clear-cut favorite to start the whole season. And uh, I don't know why he's not getting that respect. But that's what thoughts on and then i just wanted to say that i you know i've really enjoyed the show and i think that right now in the dead of july after a three-win season you guys are still doing pretty good numbers as a show and i think that once the bears start winning and it gets a lot of fun i think all those fair weather fans and all those seasonal fans are going to come out of the woodwork nick uh nick bringing up a very valid point right is khalil herbert not getting the respect that he deserved when you look at how he's grown as a chicago bear how he's like the 5.7 yards per carry last season. I think that that was that was one of the top in the NFL, and I do think he deserves an opportunity to be that starting running back. But the thing is, I think a lot of players deserve that opportunity to get a to get a chance at being the starting running back. I think when it all comes down to it, it's just what happens in training camp. It's a it's a camp battle, and and camp battles are common in football. And I think it's I don't think it's disrespectful for Khalil Herbert with the talent we have in our running back room to go out there and say, hey, listen. If you want the starting running back position, go out and take it. Go out and take it in training camp. Go out and take it in the preseason. Go out and show it. And I, and like you, I have no doubt that he's working on to help shore up the other p- aspects of his game in the run, in the pass blocking, and being used in the passing game. I have no doubt that he's that he's put in the work this offseason to improve those things. But that does not change the fact you got dogs behind you that are ready to take that position, and and you have to. Yes, it's a friendly competition because you're all teammates. But Dante Foreman has said it. He did not come here to be second to anyone. He came here to try to earn that starting running back position. Roshan Johnson, the kind of heir apparent to the starting running back position. Yes, nothing's going to be handed for him, but he's already talked about how, what he feels gives him the edge. And to stay ahead in this NFL, the modern NFL, you got to be ready for competition. And let's hope that Khalil Herbert has been preparing and getting ready because there's a competition not brewing. It's here already for that starting running back position. And we'll see who comes out on top. All right, let's get into this next voicemail. This one's from uh, Book. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, this is Book, man. Blessings to you and yours. Man, I got to tell you, Colin, Colin, Colin. This dude changed his mind more than anybody I know, man. At, at, at 1 o'clock, he's saying Justin Fields has a chance. At 4 o'clock, he's saying Justin Fields is a bust. At 7 o'clock, he's saying that Justin Fields might might be great and then as on monday he's saying justin Fields should be out of the league man this dude don't know what he wants or how he wants i don't understand how you can have a job and be like just so wrong at so many things because it ain't just about justin i've heard him say a lot of things where it makes no sense and then he had like his his his, his guppies just all around him agreeing with him yep yep that's right man that dude is a is a clown a clown of clowns man he's Bozo's daddy. But that's all I wanted to say, man. I know you heard about it. I know you feel the way I feel. But, hey, you have a good uh, upcoming weekend, man. Chicago up and bear down. Colin Cowturd. Uh, listen, it is what it is. When it comes down to the national media, 
I look at it as it is what it is. That's that's just it. Period. Point blank. Right. The national media is going to be what it's going to be. They're going to go off their storylines. They're going to have the, you know their favorites. They're this. They're that. They're this. It's been the same way in national media for over 50 years. It just is what it is, right? Yes, national media, sports media specifically, has gotten progressively worse, but I think with the rise of having people who are able to really be integrated in this team and have a platform that they've built themselves, it's made, it's highlighted the fact of who actually has talent in national sports media. And Colin Cowherd, listen, it is what it is, man. That is what it is when it comes to him. Fuck him. But all right, let's get into the last voicemail. This one's for Mike. Yo, hey, it's your boy Mike. <laughs> Oh, uh, listen, I'm starting to really like this guy, Colin Coward, whatever his name is, just so I could see you go off on him like Apollo Creed in the first round. <laughs> Why would I listen to a guy like that when I got, I got President A-Dub and the Bear Essentials. I got Hazy and the Cognac Boys. We got Pat the Designer with J-Mac. And Lance Briggs. My, one of my favorites is I love the No Name Football podcast with Olin Krutz, Jay Mack, and Big Cat. And then there's Aldo and Greg Gabriel. There's so many great Bears podcasts. I don't ever listen to these national knuckleheads, but I do love listening to Hayes freaking laid of wood, just like a Penn State safety. Loving it. Peace, brother. You guys bear down, Chicago up, bear down, and ah, bears. And I wanted to end this one on Mike because he mentioned a bunch of great people who run shows, podcasts, YouTube channels that give their 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 life. Like I work an actual full time job. I work forty five hours a week, and I still deliver daily content for this. Same with Pat the Designer. Same with uh, Just Another Year. Same with all these guys who like really give and delve their personal time into building these platforms out of love for the team. That doesn't mean we're all perfect. That doesn't mean we don't have things and aspects that we can work. It doesn't mean that me personally, I don't get caught up in being a fan sometimes and I have to check my own opinions. All those things happen every single week, right? And that's why I I, I like to try to adapt a a mindset where I can say, hey, this is the fan, the Bears fan, hey, speaking, and this is me trying to be as, as objective as I can as a lifelong Bears fan, but it is what it is. The the people who don't follow this team day in and day out, it's a glaring difference from the people who put their passion and their personal time into following teams, and they aren't working for these major outlets. They're working for themselves. They're editing these videos, putting these topics together for themselves, right? So, you know, I think as we go and as as just this type of thing with either Twitch, YouTube, podcasting, whatever it is that people use to get into this game, as that grows, it puts a spotlight on dumbasses like Colin Cowherd. That's my personal opinion. I think a lot of people share that as well. But you know what? It is what it is. But make sure you guys stay tuned in here, right here at Chicago Bears Central. We're going to be covering the Bears day in and day out. The only seven-day-a-week platform when it comes to just Bears coverage. Kayak Boys will be back tomorrow as well with their mailbag episodes. So still get in those voicemails if you choose to do so. Otherwise, make sure you're following the show at Shy Bears Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. ChicagoBearsCentral.gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for those mailbag episodes, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related because of you guys and like I liked in every episode on. Bear down. No, sorry. Huh. Shy town up, but bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, 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 break,